In tonight's rewrite, to continue a tragic theme, child abuse, Washington style. This grim story does involve little boys and little girls, and sadly takes place in a school setting. It begins with the Obama Agriculture Department trying to nudge the country into taking a baby step in the direction of sanity and better health by rewriting some of the regulations of the school lunch program to make the lunches just a bit healthier, just a bit. And of course, it fails. And it fails because what you think of as the school lunch program was politically conceived and created as a government buying program for this country's heavily subsidized agriculture industry, which is why the school lunch program is absurdly located in and run by the agriculture department. American third graders have not yet been able to figure out how to band together and use some of their milk money to hire high-priced Washington lobbyists to do their bidding to the agriculture committees of the House and the Senate or the appropriations committees. High school students haven't figured out how to do that either, but potato growers and sellers have. They have the National Potato Council, which is conveniently located at 1300 L Street in Washington, D.C., the corner of 13th and L, a prime location for Washington lobbyists, which is what the National Potato Council is, the national lobbying operation for potatoes. Nothing scares potato lobbyists more than Michelle Obama-like health freaks who might prevent them from putting French fries on school lunch trays every single day. Four days a week isn't good enough for them. They want French fries on school lunch trays every day. The new regulations would have cut the amount of potatoes served in favor of more fruits and green vegetables. Now, if it was just a fair fight between potato lobbyists and fruit and vegetable lobbyists, fruit and vegetables would have a better chance, but there's much more money, including lobbying money, on the side of keeping the rules exactly the way they are. Guess which side Coca-Cola is on when someone starts talking about making school lunches healthier. Coca-Cola has reported $35.5 billion in net revenue so far this year, but that's not enough for Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, whose noble history includes creating a so-called soft drink laced with cocaine, which is how Coca-Cola got its name, has now added to its pride-filled history, using its lobbying power to kill the new, healthier regulations for the school lunch program. There is no company in the world that can claim more credit than Coca-Cola for pushing the American childhood obesity rate above 30%. Just FYI on this thing, in Japan, where parents are not as likely to allow Coca-Cola to into their, into their homes, the obesity rate is 10%. The pizza racket in this country, even without Herman Cain lobbying for them anymore, is a force to be reckoned with. The pizza racket has some of the most inventive lobbyists in history. That is why, under the current school lunch regulations, pizza is classified as a vegetable. That's right, pizza is a vegetable. And under the new regulations, pizza would still be a vegetable. How did pizza become a vegetable? Thank you, tomato paste. That's right, under the old regulations, the tomato paste on pizza gets it classified as a vegetable. And the new regulations, just to show you how modest and marginal these changes were, under the new regulations, Pizza could still be classified as a vegetable if it just had a little bit more tomato paste on it. But that was too much for the frozen pizza lobbyists at the American Frozen Food Institute who worked with Coca-Cola and other big food companies like Del Monte and, of course, the potato lobbyists to kill even this tiny baby step toward healthier school lunches. This. This is our government at its absolute worst, at its most routine and its worst. Republicans and Democrats team up to serve the agriculture industry. They do it every day. The food producers, the stupidly unhealthy beverage business, and they do it 
They do it at whose expense? Nothing Washington politicians ever say or do proves more clearly what unpardonable liars they actually are. Every politician who makes sure that French fries can be piled on every lunch tray in every American school every day will insist that the work he or she is doing in Congress every day is for the children, our children, our grandchildren. Our grandchildren are, invo are invoked in nearly every political speech for everything politicians do. And they are almost always lying. What better proof could you ask for? Those same politicians, Democrat and Republican, made a deal yesterday on the agriculture spending bill to block the provision that would make school lunches healthier, just a little bit healthier. On the question of making our children's lunches healthier, they actually found a way to say no. They did not find that answer in their hearts. They found that answer in the vile corruption of politics and lobbying where every child is left behind.